Bienvenidos, jóvenes estudiantes. I am Francisco Gomez, owner of a vast sugar plantation here in Havana. Sit, listen closely, for I shall guide you through the complexities of our world in this year of 1630, a world shaped by the vigorous currents of trade and the toil of many. Our age, from 1450 to 1750, has been marked by profound continuities and changes in the networks of exchange. The world you know today was molded in these centuries. The Atlantic trading system, a web of sea routes connecting Europe, Africa and the Americas, is the lifeblood of our prosperity. It is a system that moves not just goods, but wealth and, regrettably, humans as slaves. Let's talk about these goods. The silver from the mines of Potosí in the Spanish colonies of South America is a cornerstone. This silver, mined often by the forced labor of indigenous people, flows across the oceans. It's used to purchase luxuries from Asia, spices, silks and porcelain, goods that are then sold in the markets of Europe and here in the Americas, a circle of commerce spanning the globe. But it's not just silver. Consider the sugar from my plantation. Sugar, a luxury once, now craves a place in every European home. To meet this demand, we have slaves brought from Africa, a tragic necessity in these times. Their labor turns the wheels of our economy, an economy increasingly reliant on slave labor. You see, this new global circulation of goods was not just about the commodities themselves, but about changing the very societies that produced and consumed them. Chartered companies like the Dutch East India Company monopolize these trade routes. They are the new powers, controlling vast stretches of commerce with the backing of their governments. It is a world where trade is power, and power shapes trade. But let's not forget the regional markets of Afro-Eurasia, they still flourish, using both time-honored practices and new methods brought by European merchants. The Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, and the overland Silk Road. They remain arteries of commerce, pulsing with goods and cultures. Now consider the impact on the common folk. The peasants and artisans from Western Europe to India and China find their labor intensified. In Western Europe, it's wool and linen. In India, cotton in China, silk. These are not mere commodities. They are the threads that connect the lives of countless laborers to this vast global network. In my Havana, you see this interplay. European linen mingles with Chinese silk, Indian cotton with African gold. And all of it, every thread, every coin, tells a story of change, of continuity, of humanity straining and thriving in this great web of trade. Remember, students, the world you see today, the exchanges of cultures and goods, has its roots in this era. The choices we make, the lives we lead, are but echoes of this grand dance of commerce that began centuries ago. As you walk through the streets of Havana, see not just the goods, but the stories they carry. Understand that every piece of silver, every bolt of silk, represents not just trade, but a complex tapestry of human interactions, ambitions, and sometimes, alas, sufferings. This is your lesson, the essence of our age. Carry it with you as you journey back to your time. And perhaps, with this understanding, you might shape a better future than the one we knew. Adios, and may your travels through time enlighten your path.